Hi, my name is Brian DeHorty. I am Jinwon Kim. I'm Henry Oberhauser. I'm Moore Shimshi. And I'm Yu. So we made a electrical impedance tomography chip. Um, and what that is, EIT, is a non-invasive or possibly invasive neuroimaging uh, technique. Um, where you inject current um, through different electrodes placed around some structure, often you know neurons or some biological structure that you're trying to uh, investigate, and then uh, you record the resultant voltage distribution using the remaining electrodes. Um, and by doing this for each different pair of electrodes, you can create a map of impedances within the material. Um, however, in uh, in brain tissue, those local impedances change over time. Uh, for a couple of reasons, either the ion channels and neural membranes open and close, which give more electrical pathways for charges to pass through, or the regional cerebral blood volume changes in locations where there is higher neural activity. Um, and so by performing this electrical impedance tomography, we can take a impedance map of the structure and also take it over time to um, detect those changes. So this is the top level block diagram of our chip. Uh, in the top left-hand corner, we have the current stimulator, which is routed through the electrode switching circuit, which allows us, as was seen on the slide before, to arbitrarily stimulate on any one of the eight electrodes that go off of from the chip. And then from connected on the other side of the electrode switching circuit uh, are four channels, which are identical. Each one of them has an LNA, which has a gain of 20 dB, a PGA, which has a gain from zero to 42 dB in six dB steps, and a mixer. And then after it goes off of the chip, it goes to the onboard uh, buffers, filters, and then ADCs. So this is the die photo of our chip. Uh, it matches pretty well with the block diagram. So you can see the four discrete channels um, uh, in the center. Uh, each one of them has uh, the first stage, which is the LNA, then the two-stage PGA. And then the top left-hand corner is the current stimulator. And then along the whole left-hand side is the... Uh, switching uh, circuit. So to show the validity of our chip, um, we need to be able to show that it can detect these very small changes in, of impedance. Um, so shown in the graph to the bottom left, um, when you apply uh, some sinusoidal current to a material with this change in impedance, you get a amplitude modulated wave at the output. Um, and so that is what we're looking for. And we're trying to um, take that amplitude modulated wave, isolate those changes of impedance and being able to record those accurately. So uh, when we record, there are um, re resistivity changes from around 0.1 to 1% cha uh, percent change um, resulting from those ion channels opening and closing. Um, and so that, um, that amplitude modulated wave is finally brought down to baseband by the mixer on each channel. And so here we can see uh, the the effect of, of that mixing. Um, so on the left is the output of the uh, of the PGA, um, where you can see the 1.5 kilohertz carrier um, that has undergone some amplitude modulation at 100 hertz, which spreads the um, uh, the frequency distribution to 14 and 1600 hertz. But then after it passes through the mixer, those components are brought down to 100 hertz. So for our demo, in order to show that our chip works, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be stimulating across three 200 ohm resistors with a 50 microamp, one and a half kilohertz, 5% uh, AM modulated current to model those resistivity shifts. And then we're going to be only measuring across the middle resistor with one of our channels. Uh, with the LNA, the PGA gain set to uh, 16 volts per volt mixed. And then we're going to measure at the output of our uh, low pass filter. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the PCB that we designed for our chip. Um, our, it sits in the middle with the electrode outputs and inputs um, off on one side for each different channel. Um, different uh, current and voltage biases are as close to the chip as possible. Um, then all of the mixer and PGA outputs are first buffered um, to ensure that they will be able to drive any filters or amplifiers. Um, and then the mixers are filtered at one frequency to remove the carrier, uh, but then the PGAs are filtered at a different frequency to um, ensure that the carrier and the amplitude modulation is uh, still contained in the signal. Um, following that, they're all digitized by two different ADCs. 
um, sent through uh, level shifters and finally to a microcontroller, a Teensy microcontroller, uh, which sends the data to a computer. Um, so for the demo that we're showing, instead of causing a actual resistive shift in tissue, we're stimulating the, um, the phantom with a already amplitude modulated wave. Um, and so this accomplishes essentially the same thing that an actual resistive shift would accomplish, um, where we can take those amplitude modulations and then shift them back down to lower frequencies. Um, so in the spectrum analyzer, you can see that the uh, 1400 and 1600 hertz components have successfully been shifted down to 100 hertz, uh, where it would be much easier to be uh, recorded, read, and um, processed.